Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much Avital and Emra for giving uh, the space to reflect on these things and to discuss these topics. And thank you so much for the introduction. I think that you already took out part of my introduction, so that's great. We optimized time, it's amazing. So just to explain a bit what it's SEGI. SEGI is a Jewish uh, contribution for an inclusive Europe. It's a Brussels-based NGO that uh, worked since 1991 in creating more inclusive and uh, uh, and democratic Europe. And it's so nice to see so many of you uh, from uh, diverse uh, uh, countries, different countries, diverse background, and so amazing to hear and to see so much uh, interest about this topic. So as Avital said, uh, I have uh, uh, I've been working for Sergi for the past two years, and it's uh, uh, important for me and for Sergi more, most of all, but also for me personally, to really understand how intersectional identities uh, prevent the uh, possibility for people to um, fully live their experiences. So just to quickly brief and briefly go through the objectives of this uh, lunch talk, uh, I would say that the primary objective of this 30 minute talk, well, which by the way, I should make a premise here. I may get a bit, uh, um, how to say, passionate about this topic. So you will excuse me if I may take more than 30 minutes, but I think that you will understand. Um, so the, main, the primary objective is to address the tension between and within Jewish communities and queer spaces, specifically for queer Jews. So the session wants to create a safe for reflection on the discrimination and exclusion that people from these diverse communities and diverse experiences face in their everyday life or in their encounters within these, uh, these communities. So this idea of diverse uh, uh, communities is really pivotal in the concept to consider intersectionality. So the session aims to create awareness on intersectional discrimination and promote inclusivity within both communities. But if we need to reflect about what does it mean to be aware of living and working or more generally being in this diverse community, we need to understand the challenge that come with um, living in communities that have established norms and these established spaces. So I would like to reflect on the absence of dialogue that sometimes happen on awareness, the absence of discussions about these topics, but more generally about also including other minoritized communities. So not only let's say that we can we can see that there are these mm, let's say lack of reflection and lack of discussion also about other communities so it's not only targeting and not only looking at queer and jews but i would say more generally more generally so what i would like to bring is to have people know or at least not ignore the others so this thing, it brings the idea to uh, be based on prejudice and pre-constructed pre -constructed ideas, which are essentially bias. So that's why it's important to reflect about these topics, recognize diversities and the unique experiences in the communities. So it is crucial to talk about intersectionality and experiences, talking and looking also at the spaces. So what I would like to do, is that before diving into, I would like to present you what I think can be interesting, or at least I hope it will be interesting, definitions of uh, Jewish person and queer person. So if you look at the Jewish person, is uh, someone who identifies with the Jewish religion, culture, or both. But being Jewish is not just about religion, it's also about cultural traditions, values and identity. So many Jewish people feel a strong connection to their heritage and community, even if they do not practice religion actively. So, 
And we need to note that there is not only one strand of Judaism, but community have diverse approaches. For example, there are conservative, orthodox, reform, etc. When looking at the definition of Jewish spaces, uh, instead, we can define them as any physical or virtual location where Jewish culture, tradition, and values are celebrated, practiced, and respected. This can include any synagogue, community centers, Jewish homes, youth movements, and online communities. Jewish space is not limited to religious practice, but encompasses all aspects of Jewish life, including social, cultural, and political activities. These vary in terms of religious observance, observance sorry, and cultural traditions, depending on the context. It serves as a gathering place for Jews of all backgrounds to connect with each other and strengthen their sense of identity and belonging. This may also be used to engage and reach out to those who are not Jewish, but are curious about the culture and values. Then we're looking at queer person. The term queer has been reclaimed in, in the late 1980s by the LGBTQIA plus community as an umbrella term for anyone who does not identify as heterosexual or cisgender. These include individuals who identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, non-binary, and more. Some people use it because they want to denote their membership of the community, but might not want to reveal pronoun, personal information, for example, in a work setting. For some, it is useful. Is it a useful shorthand if they have more than one queer identity, for example, if they are bisexual and non-binary? But for others, it allows for the fluidity without defining. So, however, it is important to understand and to know that not only individuals within the LGBTQI plus community identify as queer, and the term should only be used in someone self if someone self-identifies as such, or more generally to define spaces. Indeed, so that's why we define spaces. Uh, which are physical or virtual location where LGBTQI plus individuals feel safe, accepted, and free to express their identities without fear of discrimination or prejudice. These spaces can include bars, clubs, community centers, youth movements, and online communities. And queer spaces play an important role in LGBTQI plus communities by enabling and nurturing a sense of belonging and support. So. I thought it would have been interested, interesting to start from the definition to kind of set the level and set the ground of our understanding of what we will be talking about today. To have a shared agreement, I hope, or at least a shared idea of what we are trying to discuss today. So what I would like to highlight is that many LGBTQI plus Jews feel a pool between their identities. Sometimes they would like, they insert in specific context, they see that their Jewish identity or, and their queer identity creates a kind of identity conflict. So in specific context, they feel neither fully accepted because of being Jews, nor fully accepted because of being queer or part of the LGBTQI plus community. So it brings people to prioritize one of these identities, or as some people call them, as these closetable identities, depending on the space and context they live in or they are experiencing. So that brings people not to live fully, not to live the experiences and not to live their living, sorry for the joke and uh, in the wording, but not to be present in their own experience and in their own being. So what I would like to do today is also to bring some specific cases happening from Jewish communities and queer spaces that will hopefully, even if it's very unfortunate to be talking about these things, yeah. but that will hopefully highlight the the impossibility or the uh, incapacity for people of that are queer and Jews 
to live their full experiences because they are addressed in these kind of terms in these spaces. So, for example, uh, I remember that there was a um, case a few years ago, it was, I think it was last year, that uh, um, an Italian uh, G- uh, Jewish LGBTQI plus organization sponsored one of their events in a Facebook group that is open only to the Jewish communities. And uh, it was interesting to see how the, the reaction basically that this post uh, faced. Many people started questioning the legitimacy of having such content and such programs and events being promoted in this Jewish group. And other people even called for their legitimacy in talking about Jewish aspects and Jewish experiences. So some people even said, uh, why are these posts allowed in such group? So I think that it's important also to reflect, for example, on what community leaders said. Uh, So they talk about, for example, including uh, LGBTQI plus people in specific context, but not in all the uh, the um, the community activities or the community's um, framework of uh, um, decisions, uh, ideas, uh, and uh, possibilities. And this is really interesting. Uh, also coming from uh, what uh, uh, happened in Italy with the uh, youth movement that said that they would have created a uh, uh, um, sometimes somehow like a a discussion or tables and roundtables with uh, communities from the from with people sorry from the LGBTQI plus community to understand better their instances and to better address their instant instances through their activities and also in this post it was a uh, interesting to note how many people were questioning not only their legitimacy as being representative of the Jewish communities, but also saying that if they would have created this kind of roundtables or discussion with um, LGBTQI plus communities, these would have brought to exclude another group, which is that, which are basically the people that follow the halakha, halakha which is, are the Jewish uh, uh, rights and, uh, um, and rules, basically. So, but then the real question is, uh, what do we feel as exclusion? What is exclusion? Is it to include certain people in discussions or is it not to allow people to be integrated in these spaces? A second uh, example that I would like to bring is uh, indeed the difficulty in creating study sessions, discussions about the topic in Jewish spaces there is a, a an hostile um, environment when talking about uh, LGBTQI plus communities. And it's not only about uh, talking about talking uh, um, about sex or gender identity, which sometimes I feel the liberty to say that it's not even understood the differences between these two concepts but it's really about uh, not having the possibility to tackle these issues. There were cases in the uh, Jewish communities and the the schools of the Jewish communities in Rome of bullying. There were people that committed suicide because of their being uh, uh, LGBTQI plus and exploring their identities in the schools. And these were neither not addressed nor so sorry, neither they were addressed nor they were talked about or uh, looked into with uh, um, somehow of help and support for these communities, which also brings uh, to an important concept, which is the concept of allyship and what is an ally. So on this, I would like to bring again here. And an ally is a person and someone who helps and supports other people who are part of a group that is treated badly or unfairly 
although they are not themselves a member of this group. So for example, a non-Jewish and or non-queer person supporting the causes of the communities, standing up for others, even if not being affected in first person. I think that, and then we, we can discuss it later altogether, hopefully, but uh, more generally, I would be talking about this allyship and this ally figure. It's very important to recognize our role and to use our voices as non-queer, non-Jewish, or non-queer and non-Jewish to really address these, uh, uh, these instances and to uh, look at these um, and help the communities and the people to be supported. But another discussion, for example, could be about Orthodox communities when there is the ridiculization of the trans uh, of the transgender and transsexual experiences for example someone claiming to quote identify as a salmon while looking at a queer person so that really brings these and enhances the difficulty of talking about these topics and more generally talking about intersectionality within the communities other instances are, for example, not adding the logo of the organization to an LGBTQI plus Jewish event because of fear of, I don't even know, of not being aligned with the Jewish values or not being supported by other causes in other activities. So I think that this is really pivotal in understanding how the experiences of people, but mostly how the reflection of intersectionality and the diversities within the communities, diverse communities being Jewish and queer community is really important for us to not look at people with a certain distance. Now, I give uh, some examples coming from the, the Jewish community, but I would not like to not address also the queer community. Because I think that uh, sometimes uh, there is this, uh, let's say, misunderstanding or not full awareness of how also antisemitism is shown in queer communities. So, for example, when sometimes I um, frequent or start to talk with uh, some people, it's usually the case that the first question is about my name. The second question is about my uh, where I come from. And the third question is usually, OK, and what do you think about Israel and Palestine? So I think that this is uh, highly impacting uh, not only my experience, but more generally the experiences of uh, uh, people that are at the intersection of these uh, identities. Because, you know, having the, uh, the need of clarifying your position or clarifying your political views on a topic that is highly problematic and highly difficult to address even for Jewish people alone, it really impacts uh, the experiences and, being, and the marginalization that queer and Jewish people feel in queer spaces. But then it also, I would also like to bring another example, another example that is quite recent actually, it happened a few weeks ago. And I would like to thank also uh, some of the people that I see here for bringing it to my attention, which is, uh, it, was, it was quite interesting indeed to see that uh, while I was talking about these um, this uh, lunch talk, uh, many more cases uh, uh, came up, which is uh, unfortunate, quite uh, interesting to note. But basically, to go back to the example, um, there is now the organization of the Roma Pride Week. And uh, one organization uh, working on LGBTQI plus um, uh, topics and addressing the LGBTQI plus community said that they would like to go against the, organi the organizers and the organization of the Roma Pride Week because there, is a, there are Zionist, and I quote, Zionist associations that are proud of their emancipation on LGBT themes 
while supporting the Israeli apartheid against Palestinians and invading the space. I think that this is really important to reflect on who we are addressing, who are the target of this, and who is the Zionist association. When looking at the, at the panorama in Italy, there is only one Jewish LGBTQI plus organization, which is Keshet Italy, which looks only at, uh, or at least mostly, let me correct, mostly at the LGBTQI plus and Jewish experiences. So when talking and when addressing these uh, Zionist associations, I think that we know who the target are. But it's also important to note that this is not the only case. Last year, for example, both in Rome and in Milan, Magen David Keshet Italia, or Keshet Italy, was uh, um, attacked in both um, framework by people um, saying that they should not be there, that Jews should not be there because of what is happening in Palestine and what is happening in Israel. This is highly problematic because not giving the possibility to um, give the platform and give the chance to people to express their identities and to express their um, being queer and Jewish or being only Jewish or queer in, the, in, the, in their respective communities, it's problematic because it creates distance. It creates the impossibility for dialogue. It creates the impossibility to discuss, to reflect, and to know the other. And we know what happens when we do not know the other. We base our uh, expectations, but also our ideas on bias, which fuels hate. So I would like to reflect on this uh, also with you, that sometimes uh, being Jewish uh, in queer spaces uh, is seen, and this also links to previous lunch talks, which I hope it can be interesting for many to follow the series of Encata lunch, lunch talk happening in these months and in the future. Basically, the idea that Jewish people are seen as privileged, as being a, a seen as holding power, or privileged within the minorities or even more privileged within the minoritized community. So it is important to highlight the, difficult, uh, the difficulties of tackling intersectionality in both spaces and the importance of highlighting and discussing how we can tackle and how we can educate and how we can work in, these, in both communities to to address these issues. So I actually finished, well, I still have a few things to say, but I finished on time, so I'm quite happy about it. But just to say that kind of to sum up, it is important to look at how these uh, uh, ambiguity and sometimes uh, um, not fully taking into account the experiences and not fully recognizing the identities of queer and Jewish people creates distance. And it creates sometimes intersectional hate. So the real problem, or at least one of the problems is that this, this hate is not reported to authorities. And the fear is to lose the seat on the uh, at the table. If you report to the authorities, you are not welcome anymore in certain, in certain spaces. You are not uh, included in certain discussions, which brings indeed to the difficulty of having a platform and also having a place for the identities and to express with pride their identities. So, I would like to reflect on the last point, which is indeed the lack of support from both communities and how it uh, uh, impacts the life of queer Jews. Not being supported within the communities 
brings uh, people to not having the possibility to, or in certain cases, uh, to invalidate uh, claims of calling LGBTQI plus phobia in Jewish spaces and anti-Semitism in LGBTQI plus or queer spaces. Therefore, there needs to be a reflection on the concept of a lie. But mostly, I would like to talk with you and I would like to encourage you to share your ideas on what it means to be an ally, what it means to be a true ally, and what it, what it means to give platform and give communities the possibility to talk about these issues and to reflect on what it means to be a true and honest ally. So quite on time, I'm happy to answer any other questions or reflections that will be to, between the 9th to the 11th of June in Rome, there will be the celebration of the first LGBTQI plus Jewish pride event. And this is a, a very important uh, um, event and activities will be implemented with uh, organizations coming from all over Europe. And it's a, a very important event because it gives the possibility to talk about these issues, to reflect together about these issues, to tackle these issues with the communities and also within the communities to address how and to see how to better respond to specific cases in these diverse spaces. Thank you.